job, Squeaks. Oh, hey everyone. We spent the last few weeks learning all about engineering and how people called engineers use engineering to build things and solve problems. So Squeaks and I are thinking of some problems that we have around the fort and coming up with ways to solve those problems with engineering. My problem is that there are really big rocks in a place in my yard where I want to build a new garden bed. No matter how hard we try, me and Squeaks can't pull them out of the ground. Yeah, we've had this problem before, and I think I remember how we solved it. With a lever! Do you remember? Let's watch our video about levers to remind ourselves how they work. Squeaks and I are exploring. We're looking for insects. We know that some insects make their homes under rocks, so we're trying to turn over a couple of these rocks to see what we can find. But they're really big and heavy, and we can't get either of them turned over. There has to be something we can do. Great idea, Squeaks. A few weeks ago, we used a tool called a ramp to help us do work. A ramp, which looks a lot like a slide, is one kind of simple machine. Like all machines, a simple machine is just something that makes work easier. That ramp sure helped us move those books into the house. And there's another simple machine that we can use to help us turn over those rocks. This one is called a lever. A lever basically looks like this a long bar that's balanced on something underneath. And that something is called a fulcrum. By pushing down on one end of the lever, the fulcrum makes the other end go up. Just like a seesaw at the playground. It's just a long bar that's balanced on a fulcrum. Levers make work easier by helping us lift things that would be too heavy to lift on our own. If Squeaks hops on the low end of the seesaw and I push down on the high end, the lever moves on the fulcrum and I can lift Squeaks up. It's a lot easier for me to lift Squeaks this way than if I tried to just pick him up. Our simple machine made my job easier. So let's use a lever to see if it can help us lift up these rocks. All right, we'll put one end of the lever under the edge of this first rock. Next, we'll use this smaller rock as our fulcrum and put it under the middle of the lever. Now we can push on the high end of the lever and the rock goes up. Look, we did it, but it was still kind of hard. I wonder if there's something we can do to make the job even easier. Let's try something a little different for the second rock. This time, we'll put the fulcrum closer to the rock we want to lift. Let's set up our lever, give the high end a good push down, and bingo! That was a lot easier. For levers like this one, the closer the fulcrum is to the thing you want to lift, the easier it is to lift it. And that's what makes a lever a kind of simple machine. Even though it's super simple, a lever helps us do work. Levers are everywhere, and they sometimes don't look much like a seesaw, or even like the lever we use to lift our rocks. For example, did you know that when you use a wheelbarrow to carry something, you're using a kind of lever? It's true. The wheel of the wheelbarrow acts as the fulcrum, and instead of pushing down on the handles, you pull them up to lift what's inside. We use levers to open bottles too, and to dig in our gardens, and even to eat our food. We'll be back soon with more simple machines, but in the meantime, Squeaks and I have some insects to find. Do you remember the problem that Dino was telling us about the other day? Yep. He got a bunch of books on dinosaurs at the library and carried them all the way back to his birdhouse. But when he got there, he remembered that he had to fly to get to his birdhouse. But all the books were too heavy for him to hold while flying. He ended up needing to have Mr. Brown help him. But I think I know a simple machine he can use to get heavy stuff up to his birdhouse easily from now on. A rope and a pulley. Do you remember what pulleys are, Squeaks? Oh, that's okay. We can watch this video to remember and then get to work on something to help Dino. Today is a really exciting day at the fort. We're going to move my brand new telescope into the fort's observatory, and I can't wait to use it tonight. But wow, is this telescope heavy, and we have to get it all the way up there. I can lift the box, but I don't think I can carry it all the way up the stairs, and I'm not gonna try and move it up the ladder. So we're gonna have to think of another way to get it up there. Right on, Squeaks! Lately, we've been solving a lot of problems around the fort using simple machines. Things that make it easier for us to do work, like ramps and levers. Because we use these simple machines, we're able to do things much more easily, like when we move boxes of books up a ramp. And use a lever to help us turn big rocks over during our bug safari. And I know a simple machine that can help us 
with this job. This one's called a pulley. Pulleys are used to help lift heavy things. The thing that's being lifted is called the load. And when we attach the pulley's rope to the load and pull, the load goes up. A pulley has two main parts, a string or a rope, and a wheel. The wheel on the pulley is special because it has a groove that goes all the way around it. The rope fits into the groove just like this. So if I try to lift this box up over my head by just using my arms, whew, that's a lot of work. But if I attach the box to a pulley and then pull on the rope, the job becomes much easier. So let's see how a pulley can help us with our telescope problem. First, we need to attach a pulley and a rope above the window of the fort. Next, We'll attach one end of the rope to our load, which is the telescope box, and the junior scientist will get ready to bring the box in through the window. All right, is everyone ready? Ready, Squeaks? And pull. Oh, it's working. Take a close look at what's happening here. As Squeaks pulls down, the rope turns the wheel, and the telescope box moves up, all the way up to the window, where they can grab it and pull it into safety. Ha! They did it! And it was a lot easier than trying to carry that heavy box up the stairs. Now, pulleys can help us do some pretty big jobs. For example, the cranes that we use to build skyscrapers and the elevators that take us between the floors of those skyscrapers work because of pulleys. But pulleys help us do smaller jobs too. Did you know you use a pulley when you open or close the window blinds and curtains in your house? And Squeaks and I use a pulley every time we raise the flag on our fort flagpole. First, we clip the flag onto the rope. Then, when we pull down on the rope, it makes the pulley's wheel turn and it raises the flag high into the sky. And speaking of the sky, it's time for me to set up my new telescope. What problem are you working on, Squeaks? Oh, that is a tough problem. There are times when Squeaks needs to move a bunch of equipment in the lab at once, and he'd rather not make a bunch of trips. But he can't carry too much or else he'll drop it. Hmm, that's tricky. But I think I might know another simple machine to help us get started. Wheels and axles. Wheels are a type of simple machine that can help move heavy things easily. Let's watch this and see if it gives us any ideas. We've been out looking for rocks to add to our rock collection. And as you can see, Squeaks and I have found a ton of awesome rocks. We've just been putting them in a box and we're ready to take them back to the fort so we can learn more about them. But it looks like we might have collected a few too many. This box is really heavy, too heavy to carry. So I wonder if we can pull the box back to the fort. Squeaks, do you wanna give it a try? Rats! Oh, uh, sorry Squeaks, I mean, oh man. That was a really good try, but we're gonna have to think of something else. If you've spent some time with us recently, you probably know that we can use simple machines to help us do work. In the past, we've used levers, ramps, and pulleys to help us move big, heavy things. But none of those are quite the right machine for this problem. However, there's another simple machine that I think will do the trick. This simple machine is called a wheel and an axle. You already know what a wheel is. And an axle is the bar that goes into the middle of a wheel. In order for a wheel to work, it has to spin. And a wheel spins on an axle. I bet you can think of lots of things that use wheels and axles, like cars and trucks, bicycles, roller skates, roller blades, and our wagon. Of course, we can put the box in our wagon and then pull it back to the fort. Great idea as usual. Thanks, Squeaks. Our wagon has two axles and two wheels on each axle. So we'll just put the box inside the wagon. Okay, Squeaks, pull on the handle. And the box is on the move. We solved the problem. But how do wheels and axles help us to do work? It all comes down to how much force we need to move the box. We've talked about forces before. They're the pushes and pulls that things put on each other. In this case, the force we're concerned with is the one we use to pull on the box. When the box was on the ground, Squeaks tried to put a big force on the box to pull it. But even though he pulled really hard, he could only move it a little bit. But when the box was in the wagon, Squeaks was able to pull it all by himself easily. So it took less force to move the box. And that's what this simple machine does. A wheel and axle changes how much force we need to move something. Instead of a big push or pull, we can use a much smaller one. And smaller pushes and pulls means less work for us. Because it takes less force to move heavy things, wheels and axles make it easier to move something a long way. 
That's why they're part of so many things that help us stay on the go. And that's why you'll see wheels and axles on buses, scooters, wheelchairs, and even robot rats. But Squeaks is one robot rat that's earned a break. Hop in, Squeaks. I'll give you a ride back to the fort. Okay, Squeaks. I have an idea for one more way that engineering can help us with a super important job. Do you want to hear about it? Okay, so this is an invention using simple machines that can help you defy gravity, go super fast, and we have one right in our very own backyard. Do you know what it is? It's our swing set and slide. Swings and slides are simple machines too. And do you know the important job that they help us do? <laughs> That's right, Squeaks. They help us have tons of fun. Swing sets, slides, everyone has a favorite at the playground. But did you know that when you're soaring on the swings or sliding down the slide, you're taking part in some seriously cool science? It's true. Playgrounds are awesome places to learn about Forces. Forces are the pushes and pulls that happen to objects, including us, every minute of every day. Forces help planes get off the ground when they take off, and they help cars stop safely at traffic lights. You probably already know the name of one really important force, gravity. That's the force that pulls us and everything else around us toward the Earth. When you throw a ball in the air, gravity is the force that makes it fall back to the ground. Now, gravity and other forces all work by certain rules all the time. And a great scientist, Isaac Newton, spent a lot of time studying forces and how they work. And he discovered some of the most important rules about what happens to things when forces act on them. One rule is that something that's sitting still will stay still unless a force makes it move. And something that's moving will keep on moving unless a force makes it stop. So basically, forces are always making things move or keeping them from moving. Want to see for yourself? Check out the swings. A swing at a playground isn't going to move unless you or something else puts a force on it. When a friend pushes you on a swing, he's putting a force on you, which makes you and the swing move. Or maybe you're swinging by yourself. When you pump your legs, that movement puts a force on the swing too. But unless you or your friend or something else puts a force on the swing, it's just gonna sit there. That's part of what Newton figured out. Now, remember the second part of Newton's rule? It says that when something is moving, it'll keep moving unless something makes it stop. So does that mean that once you get going on the swing, you'll keep swinging forever? Well, I gotta say that sounds pretty awesome, but it can't happen. Because when you're on the swings, there are forces around you that will make you stop moving. One of the main forces is friction. Friction is the force that happens when two things rub against each other. And I bet you've seen how it works before. Imagine you've been swinging for a while, pumping your legs until you got good and high, and then you stop pumping. As you keep swinging back and forth, there's a lot of friction between you and the air. And there's also friction where the swing's chains meet the top of the swing set. Together, all of this friction makes you slow down. And if you wait long enough, you'll come to a complete stop. You can even create more friction. If you drag your feet on the ground, you can help yourself stop faster. Now, do you know another place on the playground where friction is at work? the slide. Gravity pulls you down the slide, but friction between you and the slide slows you down. So it lets you go at a fun, but not scary speed. But have you ever been on a water slide? The reason you go down so much faster on a water slide is because water reduces or takes away some of the friction between you and the slide. Good thing there's a nice big pool of water for you to land in at the bottom. So now you know how forces work at the playground and everywhere else. Now go outside and get your body in motion and see what forces you discover. I think we've been cooped up inside coming up with engineering ideas enough for today. Let's go outside and play on the swings for a while. We hope you had fun learning about simple machines with us today. If you'd like to keep learning and exploring with me, Squeaks, and all of our friends, make sure to hit the subscribe button and we'll see you next time here at the fort.